Hey, how's it going everyone? So what am I working on today? Well, I've got this 04, I believe it is, 04, 05 maybe, Honda Accord, it's a V6, and the customer's complaint is the power steering is noisy. I had looked at this a while back, it needs a pump. It just, it, now it's getting to a point where it's just, it's getting really bad. It's not, what happens is it'll actually foam up the fluid and it'll push foam into the reservoir and then you get a leak out of the reservoir. There's no leak in the lines anywhere. It's it's actually just that. Uh, why the pump is foaming it up, I, I have no idea. I've seen it before on Honda pumps, so we're going to be replacing the, the power steering pump. The other complaint is a banging noise in the front end. Let me show you what we're talking about. So here I am, obviously sitting inside the car. I'm in the shop. You can hear the pump whining. But let me go forward. And let me see if you can hear the noise we were talking about. It'll do it forward and reverse. Pay attention. Yeah, you might not be able to hear that. You can feel it in the steering wheel. It's a thunk. I tap the brakes. You know what? Let me see if I can get Mo out here so you can actually see what I'm talking about. Hang on a second. All right, so pay attention to that wheel. Okay, come forward. See how much it's moving? All right, now back up. Do you see it shocking? You see that, right? Okay. And there, look at all the power steering fluid. And that's not even because it has a leak. I mean, it, yes, it has a leak, but that's because it's aerating it. All right, that's good. Just leave it in neutral. With the wheel off, if you look close, that bushing is pretty much non-existent. Check that out. So what I'm going to do is, I've got a pry bar here. So I'm going to stick the pry bar underneath here and... I mean, that's, there's nothing even there. But imagine that. Look at, you have one inch of room for this thing to come forward and back and everything else. That's, that's quite a bit of room. So here's the control arm here. And as you can see, this one doesn't come with a ball joint. The ball joint is actually pressed into the knuckle itself. But here's the new replacement one. That's what a good bushing is supposed to look like. You can get just the bushings, but at this point, I figure, may as well just do the entire arm. Uh, reason being too is this bushing has a tendency to get shot over time. This bushing, especially up north, when you're trying to get out this bolt, this bolt has a tendency to seize inside that bushing. And what a joy trying to get that apart. Uh, let's see. That bushing actually doesn't look too bad on this. So really, <laughs> not this bushing, that's a cradle bushing, idiot. This bushing, that's the one I was pointing to, or meaning to point to. Uh, let's see, and then you get the sway bar end link right there. So, got to take the ball joint off right there. Not a big deal. The ball joint is tight, so we're not too worried about that. I'm going to take that bolt out there. So, let's start getting this apart. Now, this bolt itself should be a 19. And this one, too, up north, these don't want to come out. Let's see, down south, they do come out. And then, of course, this thing is absolutely soaked in power steering fluid from the leak. And now the clevis for the strut. Can you actually see that? Let's see. That should be a 17. Yep. And on the other side, it's a 17 nut. So let me get a wrench on that. And luckily, nothing seized in the bush, in the bushing. At least that I can tell. I'm try tapping it out with a hammer, see if that'll come out. Now, when you're hitting a bolt, try to use brass hammer if you have one. If not, put the nut on it. Alright, so let me get that out. I'm not going to show you everything here. It's pointless. 
I'm going to take the ball joint nut off, and I'm going to get that other control arm bolt out right there. And I'm going to take the sway bar end link off. Let's get all that stuff off, and let's get this out of there. So there we go. I got it disconnected. I just gave this thing one strike with a hammer. There, one good solid strike, and it popped the ball joint. If that doesn't work, you got to be careful, too. You don't want to hit these things like too darn hard, because you could actually damage the control arm. Although, on this, it doesn't really matter. I'm replacing the control arm. Uh, but a lot of control arms come through with the ball joint. So, now, it's just a matter of getting everything out of there. I'm probably going to use a pry bar or whatever. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll take a um, ratchet strap or something, and I'll ratchet strap this towards the back of the car, this whole assembly, just to get a little more room out of it. So let me get a pry bar in there. Let's see. Is this thing will pop out. Look at that. Here's half the bushing just fell out. That's it. It's out. All right. So now it's going to be reverse procedure to install. To get this up in there, because you have this in the way, a lot of times because the bushing is laying at a 90 degree angle to this, to have it bent down like this, it's kind of difficult to get that caught. So now this is why I'm going to take this and actually ratchet strap it back. So let me do that. All right, let me show you this real quick. So I got the ratchet strapped, just grabbing that tie rod right there. Now I'm not putting a lot of pressure on this when I do this. I'm going into a hole in a frame there. So now what that's going to do is that's going to drag it back. So basically what I'm going to do is ratchet this, and that's going to move that whole thing. So now that should help give me some more room because now the center of this is back further. See how back in the wheel opening it is? Now also when you're doing axles, that helps you an awful lot doing stuff like that. But this whole thing is back now, so that'll help me get that in. Let me see if I can do this and film it at the same time. All right, let's try this now. Usually what I have to do is I have to install this like this, get this in. Now this control arm, obviously is nowhere close to where it needs to be but this allows me to get that in there and now i can articulate the bushing allowing it to flex so allowing it to flex i should be able to rotate this end in and get this to where it needs to be now this thing's going to move so i might have to tap it with a hammer just to get it to line up i'm doing that that's actually articulating that forward. So basically, just doing this will get me pretty much where I need to be. You may have to line stuff up using a uh, drift or something like that. So let me see if I can't catch some bolts. Oh, socket's missing. Where's my socket? There it is. It's not lined up yet. Now you're not going to try to beat that thing in with a hammer because obviously you have threads and you don't want to de destroy the threads. Now all I want to do is I want to catch it. Yeah, it's caught. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm leaving it hanging down a bit. So now that back bolt that comes through there, let me see if I can't focus in on that a little better. Let's see. Okay. So now I got to try to line that up. That one's a little more difficult. May have to go with a pry bar or whatever. Just to get that to somewhat of a location that's going to be able to work correctly. Like that. And. 
it's going to have to come in more. I'm looking at the back side because the front, the front side here has a um, basically a welded on nut or a nut cert, whatever you want to call it. So I'm looking at the back side. Try to line it up. And there we go. And I got the nut in or the bolt in. Should have seen it start to come through on the other side there and yes you can see it there now that's as far as i want to go with that i don't want to go any further because that one that one you need to tighten up when this thing's on the ground or when you take a load off of this so what i might do is i might put a screw jack underneath this thing underneath the control arm itself get the control arm level and then tighten it So there we go. I got a screw jack, pole jack, whatever you want to call it, underneath there. To try to level it out a little bit. It's close enough. I don't have a drive on left where this would make life that much easier. So let me tighten up this rear bolt. Oops, let's not do that. Now there is a torque spec, but I know nobody's going to do it. So I'm not overly concerned about it. It's tight. It's not going to go nowhere. You don't have to go bananas tightening stuff like that up. Make sure they're tight. No reason to go absolutely nuts and over tighten them. So now you can take the screw jack out. So now it should tension up slightly. Yep, just like that. So now I can bring it down. I can catch the ball joint. And I can catch. See that? I can catch the ball joint and then I can catch. The, um, the clevis there and catch all that. that. I gotta get the camera out of the way. Sorry about that. I'm trying to put it on a different angle for you guys to see this. So. There you go. So now that's caught. So now I can catch this clevis here. Catch that bolt. Tap that in place. So now we can catch the nut on the back side of this. Catch the nut for the ball joint. Catch the uh, sway bar end link that's over on the back side here. And make sure you put a cotter pin in. And then we are good to go on that front. So it's not difficult. Not difficult at all. You guys can do this in your driveway. It's not that difficult. So there we go, it's out, it's on the floor as you see there, and the new one is in place and everything's bolted up. Uh, let's see, anything special we need to know about? Not really, not really. Uh, I mean, it, it's relatively simple. You could do this in your driveway. I have confidence in you guys, you can do this. Nothing to be worried about, nothing to be scared of. Just, do it, just be smart, you know, if you jack it up, put a jack stand, put something underneath it to be safe. You know, I don't wanna see you guys get hurt. But yeah, I'm pretty confident you guys should be able to do that. It's it's not that difficult. Up north, though, you got those bolts that seize up in the bushings. And what I'm talking about here is, here's that one bushing that blew apart. The bolt will actually seize into this part. So you got to get like a sawzall or something. You wind up, if you can't break it free, that is. And you wind up having to cut the bolt and then get new bolts. It really becomes a pain. But as you see, these came out, so no big deal. All right, onto the power steering pump. Actually, I decided to split this video in two. So that control arm is going to be one video. This power steering pump is going to be a second video. So I think it just makes for better content easier to find if you're looking for something. So we'll just keep that alone, that lower control arm, as it is on this video. So anyway, if you're getting something out of my videos, hit that like button. If you could, please subscribe. All right, guys, have a great day. Keep wrenching.